So that's my question and my idea for the design. What sample size will I need to get statistical significance? Oh, there's actually a lot to that question. It depends on several things that we can work through together. Oh, wow. I thought sample size calculations were quick for statisticians. Well, there's a lot that goes into justifying the calculations. Going through the exercise can be really valuable. Huh. I've seen programs online that can uh, do these sample size calculations for you. Uh, should I use one of those to save time? The calculations themselves are very straightforward for simple models, but the recommendations coming out of the calculations are only as good as what's going in. So the hard part is justifying the ingredients. Justifying things sounds good. What do we need? Well, you need the modeling yeah. hypotheses or things. Okay. Of the things we discussed, specification of a practically meaningful difference between the control mean and the treatment means is often challenging. Mm. I was taught to uh, look through the results of similar studies or a pilot study to specify the effect size. Is that what you mean? That is common in practice, but estimates reported in other studies may not represent a practically meaningful effect. Oh, so if the ef reported effect is statistically significant, then it can be used, but if it's not statistically significant, it shouldn't be used? I'm glad you brought this up. Understanding the difference between statistical significance and practical significance is important. In practice, there are different ways to judge statistical significance. From what you said, p-values from hypothesis tests sound common in your discipline. There's a lot we could discuss there, and I'll share some references with you on that topic. The take-home message is that judging a result as statistically significant does not mean that the result is practically important. Practical importance is something that is determined by the real-life implications of the research and is something that you, as the subject matter expert, specify. As the statistician, I'm happy to help guide you through the process. Well, that'd be great, um, but can we do a quick example? Sure. Uh, say you're developing a new kind of headache drug that you think works faster than the standard drug. You run a huge experiment and you estimate that it relieves headaches about 30 seconds faster on average. Is 30 seconds enough to matter? Could you sell that as practically important to get further funding? 30 seconds? Probably not. Exactly. But what if the new drug worked 30 minutes faster? Is that practically important? Yes, I would think that could matter, and I would argue we should continue with that line of research. So, something can be judged statistically significant, but not be big enough to be practically important? Right. And an effect can be judged as not statistically significant, but still be considered practically important. The values that are considered practically meaningful should be specified before looking at results from other studies. That makes sense. So how do I get the numbers to do these calculations? We need to think about the measurement scale that you are using for your study and tie changes in means on that scale to this idea of practically meaningful. It's helpful to start by considering differences in means close to zero and then gradually making them larger, asking yourself at each value, if this were the true effect, could I justify trying to convince people to spend money implementing this intervention? Okay, I think I can do that. But I'm going to need more information about the measurement scale. Can we meet again after I gather more information?